episode 176. 176 weeks in a row, zero weeks off, no big deal. We have not one, but two dynamite, dynamic, handsome, and abundant guests on today. Big Dave, I see you on. To be honest, I felt you on because I felt the energy. Um, and we're going to get this party started in just a moment. Uh, Bruce, I see you on, brother. We're going to bring you on in less than five. Less than five. So there's that. James, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Darren, there he is. <laughs> Hi. What's up, chicken butt? How are you, Sex Panther? I am phenomenal. What's going on? Good, man. Congratulations on uh, the launch of season six, office hours. Yeah, it was a hell of a week. We launched a lot of things. Uh, started off the week filming uh, season six of Two Minute Drill on Monday and Tuesday. Had our first pilot of Go Fund Yourself, uh, which is an extraordinary show where you actually can invest in the companies uh, real time and buy products. It's a streaming uh, extravaganza, an interactive and integrated show with Roy Kataya, Jason Waller, James Maslow, and the incredible Michael Chandler by Ferocious Buddha. And then Thursday, we launched the studio at the Palazzo. So now we got the win and the Palazzo. One, two punch of podcasts. Uh, we also have an event center there in the largest poker room uh, in Las Vegas on the Strip. Uh, so come by and see us. I see Clinton Sparks. He's launching the Global Game Gaming League. Uh, he has T-Pain and many others. Go and see him. Uh, he is amazing as well. He was with us on Monday and Tuesday. And then uh, Friday, we're up here. We're for the release at Silver Oak today, the release party. So we're in Napa and a uh, little wine release. So the eclectic week is still moving on. And you got two of my friends on today, not just the friends that are joining us, but coming to see us. Uh, so I'm super excited. Yeah, this is a great episode. You are the master of shows, Dave. You do so many. Um, you had me on yesterday for all the guests from season six talking about one of their favorite nuggets or takeaways from the previous season. I'd like to ask you, what was your favorite nugget or takeaway from filming or Sour season six? It's the idea of consistency. Uh, because I was doing a pilot and the week before we had the YouTube theater event, I had a direct comparison between starting out and the unbelievable acceleration, aggregation, and compounding of outcomes of being consistent and committed. So uh, as much as we've done 176 of these shows without missing a week, um, Office Hours Digital, we've done 600 and 67 shows consecutively. Uh, on the podcast, The Playbook, we've done over 1,900 episodes. Uh, and so looking at the difference of repetition, uh, we, we made it, the, the four, we, we did four, four interviews on the pilot uh, of Go Fund Yourself on Wednesday. So that show had never been done. We, we had a performance at YouTube Theater and the, the, I mean, they're, and they're both going to be amazing, but the amount of work it took, <laughs> you know, it, 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 compared to season six of something is incremental. It, like, and we do so much more. We did, you know, probably in two days on two minute drill, 80 some interviews compared to four. And it was way more difficult and cumbersome to do the four. And so that's the biggest takeaway is whatever you're doing, Stick to it, be committed and consistent in it, and it will get e easier because you'll learn to dissipate and dissolve the dis easier, the dis ease that is created. But it is impossible the first time around uh, to not have an extraordinary amount of interference. So that's my takeaway stay committed to consistent behavior, and things will evolve and it will be easy and better. That's all uh, I, I want for people. It's, it's a little mind boggling to me that some of your greatest superpowers that you've helped me obtain as well, which is consistency and, and being committed, are actually superpowers that are accessible to everybody. Yeah. But so many people want to go into that empty mile. Well, I was with, with another big time guy. Uh, we flew back from Vegas together and he charges a lot because he, he, he does a lot, right? Like I'm, 
when I coach people, you know, I'm a, hey, Dave, what would you do? What could you do? Should you do? What would I have done? And who do you know guy? So it doesn't take me a whole weekend. You don't have to hang out with me. And I don't have to do a deep, deep dive in mindset, heart set, and hand set. Um, but this is one of those guys that does it. And he's telling me, you know, I may have to fire one of my clients because they're not doing the work. And is that people do the work when you charge a lot. And, you know, 90% of what I do is free. And I don't expect those people to do the work. Some actually do. Then I expect people that are in my group to do more work. And then the one-on-one -on -one and business advisory people, I demand it or I fire them. Um, and it's, it's nothing but that commitment that I'm looking for to be consistent in what they know or have agreed upon to put them in a better place or better position. And it's available to everyone. And that's why I teach time. And you know I'm an anal retentive OCD M mother effer about time because most people aren't consistent because they don't know how to utilize time and they waste their time on tennis and TikTok and they don't do what they need to get done unless what they want to get done in their life is tennis and TikTok, then go ahead and spend your time doing tennis and TikTok. Beautifully said. Um, I have an idea, straight off the cuff, totally spontaneous. For the first time ever, since we love them both, why don't we bring on both guests at the same time? Just have an awesome 20 minute conversation. I think that's much, much easier. I love that idea. See, once again, episode 176, advancing and evolving. We're learning from the past where we get caught in an awkward transition instead just bring everybody look at that handsome dude oh my god talk about handsome <laughs> <laughs> well bruce if you really want to see him because his body is like none other uh that guy looks like a 25 year old uh and a good thing we only got him for the neck up craig <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen thanks for joining how you guys doing great all good good all good man thanks for having us <laughs> Bruce, where are you right now? Where are you dialing in from? Uh, uh, Los Angeles. I'm home for a weekend. I got a charity event this, uh, this afternoon with Dan Fleischman, uh, treating his kids. Nice. And Dan, where are you, brother? LA. Back in LA. I've been here for five days, and I'm not going anywhere until after Labor Day. The longest <laughs> stretch home I've had in several years. Very I happy about it. it. I love it. What's um, up? This is going to be so much D fun. Yeah. <laughs> This is going to be great. Um, I'll start with Darren, and maybe we'll just all take a stab at the question and so forth. Darren, one of the things that you do so beautifully is is share a lot of your story with such beautiful vulnerability, and, and it's very raw. I'm wondering, because that makes it so much more powerful and able to connect with, was that always the case for you, or is that something that you had to improve, was to become more vulnerable and raw when sharing? Well, when I... When I wrote my memoir in 2018. It wasn't actually the first time I disclosed my anonymity. That happened uh, probably, I think, after one year sober, 2009, I went on Facebook. And as Dave knows, it's hit or miss when you have a, a Jewish family. Are they happy about that or are they not happy about that? My mom was against it. She wasn't thrilled. She was a little bit embarrassed up at the suburbs of Essex County, New Jersey. My dad was thrilled. And um, I remember I was in San Trope Hicks at the time. Magic and Cookie were meant to have a, it was like their 25th wedding uh, celebration with a couple hundred guests. And they had a cancel. It was right after the economic downturn. But me and my then wife went. And I was just happy, joyous, and fray. I'm like, you know what? Let me just do a post and see if I help some people. And I got inundated on my inbox on Facebook and comments and people reaching out. And, I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. If you could talk about your deepest, darkest moments in life, the most be beautiful part about that is that develops self-esteem and self-worth within me while I'm helping other people. And I just went on a rampage with it. And when, when, Amy, when I wrote Amy High in 2018, I was about, I'd say, maybe a year and a half after my dad passed away. He always wanted me to write a book about the so-called super agent life. I, you would tell him, Dad, I'm nobody super. The clients are the ones that have accomplished extraordinary things, whether it's in boxing, on the field, acting, whatever it might have been. And it was just a moment where I sat down with my publisher, Anna David, at the time. And she goes, you know, your passion and the way you're so vulnerable and so open. And I see your feeds. And... I see the amount of people you're helping. I was already involved in Turning Point Rehab 
in New Jersey, which was one of the largest centers. And um, I, I saw what it meant to a lot of people. And, you know, here, I never would have thought after the book came out, it was a form of therapy. It was just a, a way for me to get in, in, inner healing work done even deeper than I ever thought, going back to those moments in childhood, childhood traumas, and then obviously making it to the top of the sports and entertainment industry by being one of the most broken people out there that nobody knew, but then realizing that the most beautiful blessing in my life was actually becoming a drug addict and then finding God in my faith and throwing the message out there to the world to help so many. Beautifully said. Dave, what's on your heart? It's interesting. Dave and I, again, Dave and I are criers. We cry all the time. Yeah. When talking about this. <laughs> I was just thinking, and Darren's, you know, one of my best friends, and we've known each other a long time, uh, but two of the greatest sports agents uh, of all time uh, were two of the most broken people of all time. Uh, and it's really interesting because Lee Steinberg, uh, who's the legend of all sports agents, and Darren Prince, a legend as well, uh, they both had to uh, bottom out and then illuminate and to help other people. And both, even though when they were broken, their intention was just to help people, which is why they're sports agents. Uh, and it's really interesting to me because I was always there witnessing both sides of it. And, you know, I know as much as Darren and I have had calls at 4 a.m. and just crying to each other and, and, and helping each other get to where we want to be or better to help other people get there. Lee and I have uh, been in those same spots as well. And I think it's really important. Uh, I met Craig, believe it or not, you, co you coach someone that came out to Vegas for the launch of the poker room in, in our studio at the Palazzo. There's, I'm supposed to say the Venetian Resorts, Las Vegas. That's the official term. But it seems like it's in the Palazzo to me. Uh, anyway, uh, this person came up and they're like, I, I coached with Craig Siegel. And I said, you know, that's awesome. I said, uh, how is that working out? And she said, amazing, because he... And she went on and illuminated your story uh, of Wall Street and all the emptiness and how she feels. And I saw someone here said, Darren Prince saved my life. That, that's what the comment said. So for me, that says it all. Darren Prince saved my life. And Bruce uh, has the same uh, ability as well. So I'd love to hear from him. Yeah, you guys started out. You mentioned committed and consistent, and that has been literally my theme my entire life. It's funny, when I went in the Marine Corps, a young boy and came out a man, I was just a burden on society, literally. But the core values of the Marine Corps, funny enough, are honor, courage, and commitment. So I've always been committed to everything I do, helping people. And I don't know if it was because my father taught, cause he was our Boy Scout leader and, and taught us these skills about bringing value to the community, but it's always just been in my DNA, no matter what I do, whether it's a business or whether it's a boys club or whether it's just mentoring young entrepreneurs. I think my greatest high is this, is seeing people succeeding. Like we talked to Darren yesterday about this. Uh, might help one of his friends he has a great little company, popcorn company. I love to see young people do well in life. It's truly like, it's, it's, it's my drug, it's my high. So, and it hasn't always been easy. You know, I, I was telling Darren yesterday, my, I, I come from an alcoholic family. My mother was a functioning alcoholic our entire life. All I knew is mom fell asleep on the couch drinking wine. And it finally came to a head. My, my father said, hey, we may not be able to keep stay, keep our family together as a core unless she gets help. So she got involved, involved with AA. Um, but, yeah, alcoholism has plagued my family. My little brother got kicked out of law school, got back in over drugs and alcohol. And then my, my son is a, is a functional alcoholic now. So I deal with a lot of, a lot of drama and traumatic, tra traumatic things that I don't, I don't usually talk about or see in social media or, or out in the real world. But it's a struggle. It's a struggle to help people to stay consistent and committed in life. Thank you, brother, for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you both for the beautiful vulnerability. And I know there's so many people that watch our shows, Dave and I, and we repurpose this, that it gives them permission to speak up, to talk about it, to know that they're not alone and so forth. Um, and just always want to take a second to thank you guys for this beautiful vulnerability. Very powerful. And, and, the, and the stigma is the biggest problem. You know, there's still so much shame to some people, as I think we can all identify with. And that's why it's so important that all of us push our trials and tribulations and whatever it was that we went through to get to this point. And I mean, Dave will get this point. Anybody, my superpower is truly been, you put me in any 
Fortune 500 room. Uh, Tom Brady was a perfect example when I booked him for Grant Cardone for 10X. I had 10, 15 minutes with him. He asked how Magic was doing and Hulk and Ric Flair, but I always find that opening. And it connected two guys, not his legendary career and one of the greatest ever. Same exact thing happened with David Goggins. I mean, it's why I'm the only one that works with him. You know, he's like, brother, you I'm going to fucking work with. Forget all the other agencies that try to call us. I'm not about that money. I got plenty of money because you got to fucking work with yourself every day to try to make the world a better place. And that's what my life is about. Now, I didn't get sober to have these opportunities, but Magic said it many times, as all four of us know, when you put that goodness, as Dave would say, out into the universe, when you put your vulnerability out into the universe, God can't help but to bless us because we don't want to be blessed selfishly. We want to be blessed so then we can take it and then continue to, you know, put the abundance out into the universe to help others that are struggling. Because just like Bruce said, what better high than seeing somebody be able to build a business, get out of the pit, that helps you up here, that helps you with traumas, that helps you to rebuild that core, that self-love and gives you and your family and your loved ones the ability to then get there and then reach back and give it to other people personally and professionally. Dave, this is the good stuff, the deep stuff, right? Yeah, well, that's why I love this uh, opportunity to share with my friends, because sometimes uh, it's actually quieter here uh, than it is when we see each other at Aspire or see each other at other events with so many people around us. Uh, Ironically, my social life, I was talking to my wife uh, that she's like, hey, you know, when do you hang out with your friends? I'm like, I do it every day. Uh, I just let everybody li- I just let everybody listen in because I'm comfortable with those conversations and I know that my friends like Bruce and David and Darren and Craig all everyone that if you needed me we will have the 4 a.m conversation luckily these guys are in the place uh, that they we don't need to have those conversations we usually have conversations just to catch up and have fun and uh, pull the best out of each other what one of the things that's interesting uh, Bruce and Darren uh, an epiphany that I had relative to what we're talking about is that the next step when you have so much bullshit in your life and then you illuminate your bullshit to other people to allow them to illuminate their bullshit um, is that we go through a period of time where we start looking for bullshit in other people and projecting or trying to justify our bullshit that we've done in the past by finding it in other people. And I've been struggling with that in relationships that I am here to heal myself and hopefully utilize that as an example to heal other people. But I have seen from people like us, and I'm not putting you in my boat, but a lot of times as we've gone through a certain amount of healing, we we start again having a need to be offended because it becomes obvious other people's bullshit. And we use that bullshit to justify our bullshit still. Uh, have you had any of this type of experience of looking into other people's bullshit because you know your own and yet you still got work to do on yourself? Start with Bruce. Bruce, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 hundred percent. Listen, I, what's that saying? Uh, you know, don't throw, don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. But uh, yeah. I find it. Yes, I, I surround myself with my clients, my friends, my customers. And I find their their holes in their in their wall in their dike or whatever you want to call it, and I and I do find myself calling out, but it does reflect back on me because I still have a lot of work to be done. I'm by no means perfect, and uh, but you're right, you're right. I I find it, and friends of mine will sometimes text me, "Hey, you should listen to this podcast. You should read Dave's book. I learned so much from it." And I send, I and I've even had to say it sometimes because Darren and I are both from Jersey, so sometimes you can't help but say things off honestly when you're from the East Coast, right? And I'll say, but well, you tell me to read Dave's book, but you're still kind of practicing the old way you've been. And, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's sometimes it's awkward because it does come back on me because I have my own shortcomings. No, me too. <laughs> we all do. Yeah. And one of, one of our soul's purposes is that self-transformation. And it's, as it turns out, Dave, most people that we meet will either trigger us or mirror what we need to correct in ourselves. Well, because right. we yeah, still, he- healing is such a ongoing lifeline process you know believe me i'm i wake up every morning and my first thing is i is i thank god for still being 
a degenerate drug addict because that's what led me to my purpose. So by far, uh, yeah, you know, I'm in the best place I've ever been, but it's a one day at a time uh, thing. And we, we could still track the people's bullshit to us for that unhealed childhood, teenage, whatever trauma, where we could see the good, we don't pick up on signals. It's something that's attractive to us because right now we're all on the beam. You gotta understand that all four of us are in that frequency. I don't know where I'm gonna be at three o'clock this afternoon. Somebody can draw me in and you know, there's a quality that's attractive to us and they might try to screw me on a business deal and I might not see it. I mean, it's just, like I said, you, you gotta work on this, man. It's not one day at a time. Some days on our tougher days, uh, you got you to gotta work a minute at a time and, and just understand why we attracted somebody instead of, time, of times looking at them and being like, man, I can't believe the type of individual they turned out to be or I can't believe I didn't see this. It's looking in the mirror. Why didn't we see it? What do we need to do next time to understand why something is so attractive to us when that's still that unhealed version of us that we need to do a lot of work on? Good. Uh, I wanted to ask Bruce Nugget because um, he's a master of reinvention and uh, you have this awesome philosophy that it's never too late. And there's so many entrepreneurs in David and I's community that want to do something, have a dream, but sometimes they, they talk themselves out of it you know, or the imposter syndrome where it's too late, it's not in the cards. What's the mentality to, to cultivate, to have the feeling that it's never too late and you can always start again or try something new no matter where you're at in life, Bruce? It's... It's, it's easier said than done because I've done it. So I think it's very easy, but I get self-doubt causes us to do How many people die on their deathbed saying, I wish, I wish I'd done this, I wouldn't have done that. But I met, I met the founders of Quest when I was 47 years old. And I, my, my, business, my, my bodyguard business doing well, I was quite well financially. But as it was another chapter opened up, an opportunity came and I, it became a calling and why. And I always, I always stress this to people. If you have an idea, whether it's a, whether it's a consumable item, a service or an experience, just start as a side hustle. Don't quit your day job. You could still work on Wall Street, but maybe you have an idea to sell something online, maybe an idea to do, do a financial coaching service. It's never too late to start something. And worst case is it doesn't work out. You just continue doing your day job. But I think too many people have self-doubt. And I used to suffer from what people thought about me. Now my saying is I don't. it's none of my business what people think about me um, because I'm going to try and do the best I can. Like even with public speaking, it freaks me out. But I'm doing it now, and I'm whether I'm doing it well or not, I'm doing it because it's a it's a passion. I feel like I owe it to the world to bring some value back to people that have brought me value. Um, I don't know if I answered your question, but it's never too late to start. I mean, just come up with an idea and just start it. You don't need to put a lot of money into it. It's more it's more the energy it's more the energy and the and the and the thought that goes into something as opposed to money. You know, Craig, uh, one of the things that's interesting. My grandfather came from. Uh, Russia, you know, Ellis Island, and he dreamed about retiring when he was 65. He owned a, a auto parts store and started during the depression selling tires out of the back of the truck and built up in Barberton, Ohio, right outside of Akron, a small United Parts auto store, put four of his kids through graduate school, like every nice Jewish uh, dad is supposed to do, the doctor, lawyer, failure mentality. And he retired at 65 and I was very young when he was 65 and he very soon said, you're never going to retire, Dave. He said, you're just going to continue to, to repurpose. And when I look at Bruce and I look at Darren, uh, the repurposing of life is always continual. And therefore, you, of course, inherent in the nature of repurposing is it's never too late. And one of my favorite entrepreneurs of all time is Orville Redenbacher because uh, he's from Indiana. And Orville Redenbacher was the top sales rep at 72. And they gave him the gold watch. He was the top sales rep in you know, farming equipment in Indiana. And uh, he started a popcorn company at 72. Uh, and imagine if he would have retired or if he would have thought, okay, you know, that's enough. It's, it's too late for me to do anything else with my life. So I'm just gonna sit back on the farm and enjoy my retirement and my new watch and my grandkids. Uh, and I see so many people today, especially with all the longevity things that we have, that we got to get into the mindset of repurposing, repassioning, reprofiting, 
and what we do in the infinite world of more than enough. And these two cats below me, if that's where they are on your screen, uh, they're the kings of repurposing. And uh, that's what makes them who they are and allows them to repower and empower other people. And uh, it's a really important concept that Bruce is talking about, this repurposing of life. That's a good nugget right there, David. I like that. Yeah. I like that story about uh, Orville, too. I didn't know that. It's cool, right? I, yeah, well, that's why it. they pay me the big bucks. That's why I need Darren Prince as my agent. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, real, real quick, I have to ask you guys, because you guys definitely have more wisdom than I do. Um, you mentioned there getting to a place in life where you no longer care what people think about you. Um, that, that's a path that I'm on, but I'm not there yet. Uh, any advice uh, on how to get there a little bit faster on not worrying about what people think about you guys? Darren, you go first, then Bruce, then me. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't really pay attention to that anymore, man. For me, it was so easy, but I'm throwing out my deepest, darkest crap. You know, big cat. What is the expression? Go if you don't have haters in life, you're doing something wrong, and you're never going to meet a hater doing better than you are because who has time to think about that? Um, so, you know, I really don't pay attention to it. And, you know, we're from by leaps and bounds on the entrepreneurial front, the Prince Marketing Group side, different ventures that we have going on, like uh, Bruce mentioned, and my good friend Lisa Capri, we have Lisa as good as I just got involved as a partner in a private equity group. I, pl I got plenty of people back in New Jersey that are probably shaking their head. How, how can this kid that started a baseball card company at 14 year old, 14 years old, and went down the path of drugs and alcohol and all that? And I mean, but I don't hold it against people because I may better look at them and realize that it's coming from an unhappy place. And I've actually taken some haters over over the years. So I could specifically remember and talk to them and see what's going on in their life. You know, I know there's certain ones that you're never going to change, but there are some occasions where you could, you know, you could help somebody with their mindset to you know, really make that change and, 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 and get them to pivot on the journey that they're always meant to be on. It's a beautiful thing when you can do that instead of be reactive. Beautifully said, brother. Bruce, how about you? Yeah, it does a creep in my head occasionally for sure, but then I remind myself, listen, I was held back in fourth grade. I failed my final exam in high school. I had to go to summer school to get my, my diploma. So I've never been the smartest, but I've always worked the hardest. And a very big speaker, the name just slipped me right now, but I think Dave even uses this. Don't make speaking in public about you, make it about them. And that's when I became much more comfortable. Stop worrying about my own ego and, oh, my God, I'm nervous. And think about the value you're trying to bring to these other people. So then I had to it, – it changed my mindset on what, what people think about me. I'm just trying to bring you value, you know. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I had terrible what I called FOPO, F-O-P-O, fear of other people's opinion. And then I realized in my life – that people laugh at me, they scoff at me, they make fun of me. But eventually, if I keep doing what I am supposed to do, they applaud me. And 10% of the people will hate you no matter what. It's a frequency thing. That you are Tabasco in a wound. And those are the people that actually protect you. And so what I've learned over the years is don't listen to the 10% that love you no matter what. Definitely don't listen to the 10% that hate you no matter what. But listen for what everyone wants to learn. And then you will change your FOPO, the F-O-P-O, into JOPO, which is the joy of other people's opinion. And I really, like my friends, I really enjoy people who hate on me and attack me. And I give them my cell phone. Craig, you've seen it on this show. They, they, they have attacked me. They've said awful things about you and your, your fiance and my wife stuff that they want to do from behind them and just awful <laughs> stupid things that I actually have Jopo with I joy of other people's opinion. There's one thing I've learned in life and my friends know it hurt people hurt people. That's as simple as it is. So if you're hurting out there, instead of trying to hurt us, give us a call. We are all accessible to you to stop the hurting so that we pray for your happiness so that you can empower others to be happy as well so live in jopo the joy of other people's opinion remember they're going to laugh at you scoff at you make fun of you attack you but eventually i promise you if you are you they will applaud you and i applaud my friends all three of you for showing up here on saturday to help our community live a better lives be happy make more money and help more people thank David, you 100 weeks. Beautiful, hard, man. Hard, Love it. Uh, 
probably the any episode top this one. This might have been the best ever. So powerful, deep. Yeah. Bruce Down, I love you guys. Thank you for hopping on, like Dave said. Thank you for opening your heart. And uh, thank you for just everything that you guys do. We love you guys, and we'll connect offline. Thank, thank you. you. guys have a beautiful day. I'll go reach out, guys. Day, Good guys. to see you. Dave, okay. thank you. Okay. Love you. Bye-bye. Where love are you, you traveling to, Dave? Uh, well, just, just like a typical alcoholic, I'm in Napa on a wine tour for the release at Silver Oak. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye, guys. Love you. Bye. 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 Love you guys. <laughs>